Alright, so this is what if Colo what if Deku was Colossus part four. Now part three didn't really get that many views, only like seventy one views or a little bit higher than that. But at least for now, I don't really know right now. But basically, this is what if Deku was Colossus part four. Now, basically, this what if is going to be a continuation of part three, obviously. And it's going to be mainly better because I did rewatch that video and try to re-edit it. But that video, I just had a lot of background noise in that video. And that's probably why I had so many, you know, not that many views. But basically, guys, I'm going to be up So after I'm videoing, you know, after I record this video, pretty much tomorrow, um, tomorrow, Thursday, I'm going to be uploading what if... What if Crisis event Superman and Lois and John Jonathan like I think Jonathan, yeah the John Kent John Kent I don't remember his name but basically Superman's son or like real son he have Lois, basically, pretty much I'm gonna be doing a what if on them, what if they were in the Invincible universe I'm gonna be uploading part one, to that um tomorrow Wednesday evening. About maybe four or something, maybe like six something, but yeah. And also on Friday, I'm also gonna be uploading a new what if. I'm gonna be uploading what if Deku was Ant Man or what if Deku pretty much invented pin particles. I'm gonna be doing that, and yeah. So those are gonna be the three what ifs, including this one, uh, this week. Now, I may do a double upload on Friday because I want to at least upload at least four or five what ifs a, a week or four or five videos a week. Now, last week I said I was going to upload, you know, pretty much this week I said I was going to upload my stop motion. So I'm going to be uploading three what ifs and stop motion on Friday alongside my what if Deku was Ant Man what if. Now, let's just dive into the video. Now, we start our story off last time where we left off, where we see that Deku was about to get in a fight with a couple of thugs with his powers, him being freshly injured from the USJ event, or pretty much the attack on the USJ, with pretty much the villains, Shiraki, the Nomu, and all my all that other stuff, as he would before that, prior, after the, you know, pretty much USJ thing. Basically, he did get, um, well, the ship for this one, a female Tetsu Tetsu's number. Now, basically, what happened after that, he would go into an alleyway after he would drop, after he would walk Tetsu Tetsu, female Tetsu Tetsu, to her house. Basically, him coming into some, running into some th thugs, him about to beat them up, him being still, still like, semi-injured by the slightly fractured bone that he got in his middle state, but he would be saved or i guess um stopped from fighting when deadpool showed up and took out all the thugs now deadpool would tell deku that he found information on where logan is and also found information on his grandfather aka the original colossus in the x-men universe but just in this universe the original colossus with the x-men still being a thing and mutants still being a thing in this universe now basically what would happen is Col is we get switched to the next day. As you see Deadpool talk to pretty much Deku about his grandfather, about how his grandfather had a kid, had a kid, and that kid was, well, you know, your father. But your father, for some reason, had another child. Basically, Deku being very confused, asking what was, go what was going on. As he would be telling him that in his early years when you when his dad was, you know, kind of a bachelor in his early years, in his early days when he was in his 20s, he mainly abused his reputation or his powers. Power and abused in so many different and cool ways. Him making a buck, a lot of money, off of his abilities, doing side gigs, and also doing some sort of hit hitman list. Eventually, him coming across one of the newer members of the children of the original X-Men, well, the the son of Pietro Maximoff, the son of Quicksilver. Him not being an original like, member of the X-Men, but him being there in the original beginning near the early days of X-Men, near there. Now, Pietro Maximoff 
would have been alive at this point in the future, right now, in canon history, in this what if, but wouldn't really play a big part in the story much at all. Now, what would happen is the daughter of, you know, Quicksilver basically fell in love with Deku's father. Now, they had a child, and that child was put into adoption after, well, after Asashi was put into jail for a few for a couple years and well Pedro Maximoff's daughter was killed in a very gruesome all the way terrorist quirk event or quirk, quirk attack basically pretty much Deku's father eventually moving on him assuming that the child was dead because he never seen it he never seen the child and they never told him that the child was ever born because he wasn't there for the child's birth and didn't know if the mother died as she was pregnant or before or after she was pregnant. But after that, we would see that we would see that Deku's father would have moved on, having another child, Deku, and marrying Inko. Him abandoning that old life of doing hit jobs and doing a bunch of other stuff. Him eventually going back on his fa his father's side and him eventually going to well going to pretty much well raise Deku like a father would. Now, what would happen is Deku would hear this story, and Deadpool would have told him that's the, you know, information I got, buddy. But, you can find out more when you see the child. As Deku would be confused, saying, so I have a older brother. Now, basically, Deku's, uh, Deku, Ben... Deadpool, sorry. Deadpool would have explained to Deku that, but it's simple that, well... Your brother actually lives in Japan right now and is actually going into UA today as a transfer student from another Hero Academy that he was able to pass the internships on that Hero Academy to get a quick little dive in until Class 1A. As Deku would say, what? As Deku would say, yeah, so it'll be more second that tomorrow or a couple days, you know, when you guys go back to, go back to you know, school or whatnot. Basically, what would hap what was gonna happen is you're gonna meet up with your brother, okay? Simple as that. After or pretty much when Deadpool is done explaining everything and says that proximus approximately whatever I can't pronounce the word but or I can't think of it, but pretty much in the next couple of days when you guys go back to the academy. And, you know, stuff like that. Deadpool explains that, well, you're going to meet up with your brother. Now, I have gotten the description. He looks just like, well, similar to you, actually, just without freckles. He also has white hair instead of black hair. And he also has, well, super speed and the ability to harden as he has superhuman speed. Basically, when he runs, his quirk, his mutation or quirk description, description is that as he runs, his skin hardens in the same, you know, universal or mystery metal your, you and your grandfather's skin and your father's skin semi was made out of. And basically, he can only mo activate it as he runs. So yeah, so when he's just standing still or when he moves fast. It doesn't harden if he's running longer than at least like let's say 20 seconds or 10 seconds he can you know run pretty fast as his skin is hardened so he's basically an unstoppable torpedo but if someone's strong enough like i guess like all mine i guess or someone like that I mean, they can stop your brother but deadpool explains that your brother's going to be showing up in the next couple days at your school and you're going to have to tell him he already knows his father, you know, put in the jail, and he doesn't even know his real father. He doesn't even know he had a sibling, and he never met his mother. He's a do he's a orphan, and he needs his sibling with him. Basically, him saying that I need you to talk to your brother, and I need you to do it fast because he may be the key to a little bit of a war that's happening in Japan. Now, basically, pretty much. Well, Deku would be confused, saying, what What do you mean, war? As Deku would say, I have a little bit of gang war going on with a couple other quirks and mutants, you know, going against each other. 
and a little bit of involvement with the League of Shadows, but but it's nothing too serious. As Deku would have been like League of Shadows. He would have said, not them, I mean what was it? Who else? Um no. The League of Villains, I think so. Basically Deadpool saying that. Now as been Deku. So basically after that Deku would have walked off and he would have been thinking about this in his house or in his room. Now as he would go do a little bit of training doing lift ups and stuff like that, as he would call well tetsu female tetsu tetsu. Pretty much him trying to call up female Tetsu Tetsu, or Tetsu. Now basically, as Tetsu, Tetsu would have picked up, she would have answered like very quickly, only like two seconds of ringing, and she would have asked, you know, what did he want to do, or why was he calling him? As she would have been, you know, pretty much sitting next to the phone, just waiting for Deku's response, as Deku would have responded with you know if he want if he wanted to get together this last day before we had to go back to you know a cat go back to the academy or go back to the school now as she would have thought about it she would have made me say yes and they would start to text each other's text each other the details as they would have set up their date for the last day before they had to go back to the academy as they would meet up near a park, as they would start to just walk together, them talking, a bunch of other stuff. Him eventually, near the end of the night, they're just having a normal type of anime-esque romantic date. Them tripping, laughing together, having fun little conversations, stuff like that. Them also talking about their quirks a little bit. And basically, Deku eventually leaning in for the kiss at the end of the night. Him eventually, well, becoming somewhat in a relationship with, te with female Tetsu Tetsu. As they would have, well, ended off the night there. Her saying, I'll see you tomorrow. Basically kissing him goodbye. Her walking away. As Deku would have been, well, pretty much ecstatic. Or basically him being ecstatic. As he would have gone to sleep that night. Him waking up the next morning to get to, well, the academy or to the school. As he would have walked in class, him seeing a white-haired boy in class other than Todoroki. And him also seeing, well, female Tetsu, him pretty much flirting with her a little bit, walking past her. As he would sit, sit down, he would start to look around, him sitting right across from his, let's just say, his brother, I guess. So after Deku's brother pretty much would have you know introduced himself to the class after you know Deku would have looked at him as he would have had white hair and look some and look well exactly like Deku just imagine this picture without you know freckles and him and his hair being a little bit shorter like a tad bit the same height but a little tad bit shorter now he would have introduced himself as being Pietro and pre Pietro Maxa and basically him introducing himself as, you know, a speedster quirk. Him basically, you know, just saying what he wants to say. Just to like that. As they all get told about the sports festival after that. As they get told to train. As we skip the past couple days. As Deku, the past couple days would be observing his brother. But also still, you know, trying. Him still also flirting with. Tetsu Tetsu in the hallways, you know, what was it, obviously, and him eventually becoming a full-time, or like, not full-time, but a, a pretty much of a legit relationship with her. Now, as Chaku would get a little bit, you know, ticked off by this, but her just letting it go, as she would have, you know, felt a little bit of interest with Deku's brother. Now, as Pietro would have been walking around the school, the school, you know, pretty much hallways after Deku would get done with, you know, a talk with All Might. As he would walk towards, pretty much, well, as he would walk towards his brother. As you would bump into him. As they would grab their, you know, stuff and pick it up. As they would both look into their eyes. And they would see something familiar with both of them. Basically, them looking uncannily similar to the same. 
basically him saying, do I know you from somewhere? And Deku saying, yeah, we're brothers. As the room would have, as the hallway would have already been silent, would have been dead silent. The room they were in was about uh, Mazawa's room, and pretty much they would have been, it would have been dead silent in the room. It was already silent in the room before they, you know, bumped into each other, but it was dead silent. Like, you could hear the lights, you know, just, you know, well, glimmer. Or you can literally hear the AC unit going off. As they would have been stopped or stunned, them just looking at each other. And PH was saying, what do you mean? I have no siblings. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an orphan. Right? Basically, I'm confused and dictating himself as he would have been told from deck the whole story the point of view of his father and everything else happening with his mother and his face being just like this in the picture as he would have asked him so you're my brother and you were raised by my father he didn't know i existed right he didn't know i was born he thought i was dead right that was saying yes he thought you were dead and i had my friend deadpool him saying deadpool you mean the the guy that used to be on the X-Men years ago? Him saying, yeah. Yeah, that Deadpool. Him saying, can I meet him? I'm a huge fan. I'm also a huge fan of Pietro. You know, Quicksilver, my uncle. Sorry, grandfather. Now, pretty much, Pietro would have been talking to, well, Deku going back and forth. And him eventually saying, so... You wanna meet up later? Him giving him his number and them meeting up later over the few couple days to get ready for the, well, as well, PHO would have trained with Deku over the, you know, couple days to get ready for the sports tournament. As they would eventually get ready, him, him for sakes, just wearing like, what was it, yellowish goggles, kind of like Speedwood. Basically, him wearing that for the sports tournament to keep his eyes from, you know, buttering up. Because his eyes don't turn invincible when he runs for some reason. But they do move at supersonic speed to keep up with the speed. So, they would have got ready for the sports tournament. Them all getting ready for it. As they would have started to get ready, them all be getting dressed in their sports outfits and everything like that. Todoroki still walking at the deck. He was still saying the same thing that he's gonna beat him and stuff like that. As Deku would have just shrugged this off, saying whatever, and him just walking off. As him and his brother would have started to make somewhat of a plan. Now, as they would start off, they would meet up with Miss Midnight as they would be told to do a speech. Deku, being one of the strongest members in their team, or strongest members, or strongest students in their class, him doing a speech, saying they do your best. And that anybody can win if they put their heart to it. Anybody can do anything. Anybody can achieve anything in their heart, in their wildest dreams. And as long as they got the heart, ability, and the willpower to see it through, they can do whatever they need. They can do what their mind, what their body says about them. Pretty much some of them getting kind of confused throughout the speech. But Deku just saying the mean or in the you know big point of the speech is that if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And basically, him saying to do your best out there. Still like that. Now, as he would have came off the, you know, pretty much st the stage, as he would have walked off and Midnight would have taken up the mic saying, your first, you know, thing you're going to be doing for the sports tournament is a race. So we got started doing racing. As that would be an alpha similar to this. As he would start to fight against pretty much Taroki a little bit. As Taroki would have frozen her by his feet off the bat. As Prieto would have just, you know, break the ice. And would have started to speed blitz through everything with his, you know, invincible or somewhat invincible skin as he runs. As he would just be obliterating or torpedoing right through the robots. Him literally passing by Taroki and being in first place already only one minute in the race. As Deku would have seen this, he would have used most of his strength to make a shockwave to combine his already incredible strength with his... and combine his one-for-all strength plus his Colossus strength breaking the ice as he would speed blitz past all the ice as he would speed blitz towards all the other pretty much robots. Basically, him using all for one in his legs plus his already 
and extremely incredible strength with Colossus' powers as he was started to jump across all the robots and blow them up, and pretty much punch them across the, you know, area. As the big robot would have fell on Deku, Tetsu Tetsu, female Tetsu Tetsu, his girlfriend, and also Kirishima, as it would all fall on him. Kirishima breaking through it as long as Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu, and pretty much Deku. Them all breaking through it and then running away in several directions. As Deku would have started to sprint then and there as fast as he possibly could, he would eventually pass by a couple other, you know, pretty much people that were getting up on him. Him using a huge boost of all for one of his legs. Him pretty much turning off his Colossus abilities halfway through the jump so he can build up a lot more, you know, pretty much air since he would be a lot more lighter. As he would have fell down to the ground, him eventually hitting the ground, turning into his middle state, him getting no real damage by that. As he would have completely jumped over the canyon or the rock you know, land, landscape of the, you know, obstacle course. As he would have ran across the mines, him just taking the blows, blow after blow with his Colossus form, him just taking all the, you know, mines and stuff like that, just doing them like a pro. As Pietro would have already been at the finish line, as he would have been like, by like, what was it? Uh, by like, uh, like 15 feet away from the finish line. from the finish line as he would have been running as fast as he could as he would stop seeing that everybody was already you know way behind him him just chilling and as he would have looked up he would have seen his brother going full speed him running as fast as he possibly could him running as fast as probably a car or a locomotive him just running as fast as he possibly can him putting a lot of strain on his legs and all for one him combine both of his powers in his legs him you know, simulating super speed in some sort of way. As Pietro would have ran as fast as possible, him tripping over a rock, him tripping and falling, like taking a huge hit because as soon as he stops running or as soon as he loses traction for like more than five seconds, he basically goes back into his human state or his less hardened state. As he would have looked around, seen that Deku passed him, and as he would have got back up, building up more speed, as he would have ran right towards Deku, them getting a tie. Him not building up a lot, uh, enough speed to pass by Deku. Now, as they would have tied, they would have done a little bit of a tiebreaker. Them having a quick little race across the stadium, pretty much having you know a lot of you know, uh track hop track runners and a bunch of other people slowing them down. As they would have done the tie breaker, eventually Deku losing. Because of speed and you know everything else and basically pho winning him being going first place as pho would have gotten first place and deku would have gotten second place as they would all get in their get into their groups as deku would have gotten into his group him being a two-man group him being the top him refraining from using his powers not to you know put too much weight on himself and also him pretty much getting ready for the run of his life as people would have gone after Deku first because they would have known that, you know, Pietro with the speed would have been really hard to find. Would have been really hard to catch. As Pietro would have been more the horse of the whole entire thing. Him running as fast as he can. Him using his super speed to speed blitz him across the pretty much, oh, is it stadium with his partner? His partner being um, Ochaku. As Ochaku would have, you know, just floated them in the air for a long period of time. Her just, you know, trying to keep her, you know, lunch down as they are floating. As this happens, we see that Deku is using most of his one-for-all powers in his arms and in his body to shoot air attacks or pressure attacks towards other team members to get them down. And him grabbing multiple other wrist, multiple other bandanas and stuff like that. Him eventually going against pretty much... Well, Bakugo and Todoroki. As Bakugo would have came towards Deku, Deku throwing a huge bolt of pretty much, or a huge blast of wind with his one for all powers, him pushing them back alongside Todoroki. As they would have done this for a long period of time, eventually the match would have been over, and they would move on to 1v1s. On doing the waiting room, Deku's brother would have told De Deku that, you know, try not to be too mean out there. And as it would happen, we would start off our first match, the first match being Deku, 
and Deku going up against pretty much well as he would have gone up against Shinso. As Shinso would have used most of his power to pretty much, you know, off the bat mind control Deku. As Deku would have been walking away, as he would have been stopped by pretty much, well, his middle state. Him using a lot of, well, not a lot of force, but his arm still being slightly fractured in his middle state. Him going full on middle state before he even got hit with the mind blast. Him breaking out of the control a second the second he moved. As he would have speed blitz towards Shinso, basically him knowing his quirk by now. Him throwing a huge punch straight towards Shinso's chin, knocking him out cold, finishing the fight in a matter of like a minute or like 10 minutes. As Shinso would have been knocked out on the ground and basically Deku not really caring for Shinso at all. As after that, we would get moved on to Pietro's fight. As Pietro would have fought against pretty much Momo after or before her fight with what was it the bird the bird or shadow dark shadow type guy I don't remember his name Pietro's fight would have been similarly the same him basically just using his speed blitz attack to pretty much just grab Momo and get her out the ring as fast as possible not really touching her at all just pushing her shield back as far as he can just speed blitzing her out of the ring and basically just taking her out pretty quickly as match after match would have happened Deku and Pietro taking down their opponents eventually Deku and Pietro having to fight each other now pretty much the top you know people that have been you know left the top people that have been you know left was Ochaku Pietro Deku uh, Bakugo and Todoroki. As they would be the last couple people left in the 1v1s. As Todoroki would have, you know, been the last fight. As pretty much Deku would have fought against his brother. As he would have gotten into a fight with his brother. As he would have gotten warmed up. And they would have started to fight. As Deku would have speed blitz towards his brother. His brother already being behind him, punching him left and right. Using his super speed to stay hardened and to pretty much punch him left and right, not letting Deku get a chance to throw a punch. As Deku would have been taking these like a like a champ, basically him dodging most of them, him throwing one right hook or one good right hook towards Pietro. As Pietro would have dodged it, him throwing a huge punch toy straight towards his brother, him knocking him into the ground. As his brother would use a one for all move, a shock wave. Pushing Pietro off his balance, making him fall onto the ground, and Deku kicking Pietro right to the forehead, knocking him out. As Pietro would have been, you know, pretty much taken out pretty quickly because mainly well balanced, and on top of that, he wasn't expecting for Deku to use a shockwave out of nowhere as a dirty little cheat move. Now, as Deku would have got, would have picked up, you know, Pietro after he would have, you know, got back into consciousness before the medics showed up to get him on a stretcher. As he would have walked off the, you know, pretty much ring or pretty much the, oh, is it the arena? As after that, Deku would have gone up against Todoroki. For Todoroki match, for T Deku's match with Todoroki, it would have been a lot more brutal. As Todoroki would have been throwing ice attack after ice attack after ice attack towards Deku, Deku would have just been blasting towards the ice attacks with his, you know, colossal abilities. Him just blasting through them like nothing. As they would have started to go at it. As Deku would have just been taking the hits. Like a champ just, you know, blasting through the ice. Him using a huge shockwave to knock the ice back. And push Todoroki almost out of the ring. As Todoroki used to use his ice powers. Him shooting multiple ice blasts towards Deku. Him taking them like a champ. And him eventually finding you know, Todoroki. Him knowing about Todoroki's fault and, and his true power of his quirk. Him saying, how are you going to beat me with your when you're only using... 1% of your power, you're weak, you're pathetic, basically him taunting Todoroki, eventually Todoroki losing it, and him using his quirk, as he would have used the potential of both his quirks, him using his, you know, ultimate move attack, as pretty much Cement Head would have tried to break this up, as Deku would have used a Sonic Clap to sort of take, you know, pretty much, what is it, Cinder Head or S Cement Head, or whatever his name is. Cinderblock, I think it was. Cinderblock would have put up a few walls, but a little bit less walls on this can continuity. 
as the shockwave would have broke through most of the cement walls, and Deku taking the full blast of the awakening move, as his middle would have been not at all phased because well, Colossus has been able to take explosions, nukes even, in certain continuities, and even able to survive multiple days in space with his, you know, middle-like state. And on top of that, basically him, even at some points, going days on in, in the deepest, darkest trenches of the water, him not getting any type of pressure, you know, pretty much, you know, damage or anything like that. Deku basically, plus he being a lot more stronger than continuity or canon, you know, Marvel continuity classes because of all for one. So, basically, one for all. Basically, pretty simple. Yes, Deku is basically OP. As Deku would have gotten up his suit, or as it was it, his sports outfit being slightly ripped and slightly burned, his whole upper half and his you know, calves down from his feet would have been all burned away. Somehow his pants would be, you know, still there. As Deku would have gotten up, him using a huge sonic clap to push back Todoroki. As Todoroki would have gotten back up, him trying to, you know, get more, get a better stance, as he would have been, you know, gladly met with the mean left hook at, in the literal kid, in the kidney or in the, in the liver, him being liver shotted, and him being knocked out out of pain. Now, after that, we would have seen that Deku would have had a fight with Bakugo. As Deku would have not really want to go up against Deku, Bakugo's explosions, him just wanting to end this fast, he would have picked up a tile out of the concrete, or grabbed a piece of concrete, and would have chucked it at full blast towards Bakugo. Bakugo dodging it, but him being, you know, gladly met with a hardened Colossus liver shot. Basically, him being knocked out out of pain, and him being, you know, turned into a literal log on the floor. As he would have been knocked out pretty quickly, Deku just trying to end this fight pretty quickly because he knows that Bakugo's power is pretty destructive. But his, you know, hard state would have been able to keep up with the explosions. But he just didn't want to sit through, you know, Bakugo throwing explosions and him getting more angry because they weren't doing anything. So, yeah. So, after that... We see that Bakugo would have been on the stretcher, being, you know, hauled out like Todoroki, and Deku would have been in first place, as they hear, as the villain, League of Villains would have found entrance, interest in Deku. Now, I'm going to leave it off here, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you guys like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. Before I go, tomorrow I am going to be uploading, uh, I'm going to be, tomorrow, I'm going to be uploading what if Deku, what if, uh, Crisis, Superman, and Lois Lane, and also John were in the Invincible Universe, and also Jonathan Kent, Jonathan Kent were in the, pretty much, Invincible Universe, yeah, Superboy, basically, yeah, that's gonna be a what if, it's gonna be coming up on Wednesday, it's gonna be here by Wednesday, uh, no, from, by Thursday, in, like, the afternoon, and on Friday, I'm going to be doing a double upload. I'm going to be uploading my stop motion. I've been putting it on hold. Basically, voice acting. Some A voice actor of mine is just taking a really long time to, you know, get me the clips I need to finish the stop motion. But basically, stop motion is majority subtitles because I couldn't find other voice actors for certain characters. But basically, well, what's going to happen is on Friday, I'm doing a double upload. I'm doing a stop motion upload with my what if what of oh, my Black Panther versus Predator stop motion six minutes long. It's the best stop motion in my opinion I have ever done, and you guys should very much go see it when it comes out on Friday. And on Friday I'm also gonna be uploading what if Deku was Ant Man, so I'm gonna be uploading that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. Hope you guys like and subscribe, and have a blessed day. Oh, 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 oh,